As the host nation, Australia set the G20 uh, target of 2% growth globally. And it makes sense if you're trying to achieve that target that you invest in the whole population, which is in women. As Hillary Clinton said, it's, it's not only the right thing to do, it's the smart thing to do. It's obviously the Scandinavian nations, but Australia also has an opportunity to showcase what we are wanting to do with our target of a 25% reduction in the gender gap by 2025. When we're looking at a reduction in the gender gap by 25%, we really need to be looking at developing nations where well, this is going to be a challenge. Women are still battling to have an education. Children are being sold into sexual slavery. So we're really need, needing to be looking at policies on an international level, not just for industrialised nations like Australia and the US. In some ways, what we're trying to achieve is already being achieved. The Prime Minister's put gender firmly on the G20 agenda and the dialogue running alongside the G20 with world leaders across business, politics, entrepreneurship and development really affirms that this is an important global issue. The fact that the dialogue has so many world leaders across many areas from business to politics uh, talking about these important issues uh, globally, internationally, it's on the agenda. There's a, there's a real air for change and not only change but actually real targets for change. The challenge for G20 leaders will be implementing these international uh, targets domestically and part of what we're trying to achieve with the dialogue as well is how can we implement policies that are fit for a 21st century society where women want to work and men want to share the work at home, uh, where we have policies where, that encourage more women into politics, where they can stay there and have a long and healthy career.